Today we are interviewing uh, Jean-Philippe Chaput, who is at the University of Ottawa. And what research center? At CHIO Research Institute. Could you tell us about CHIO? It's a, it's a group that works on uh, childhood obesity? Yeah, it's called the HALO group. So HALO stands for Healthy Active Living and Obesity Research Group in Ottawa. So it's a growing group and uh, we are doing mainly obesity prevention in children. We are at the CSEP meeting uh, of exercise physiology in Quebec City and Jean-Philippe, you participated yesterday on a symposium about physical activity and childhood. Yeah. You did study and you also reviewed of what we call mindless eating, which is um, eating more than what we need biologically, and but uh, with uh, considering uh, different uh, different factors, we know that the publicity would 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 make us uh, eating more. But you have d discovered that other uh, factors could uh, could uh, make us uh, eating more, and and at what extent? Yeah. So I was talking about a lot of activities in the modern way of living that increase food intake in the absence of hunger. So regardless of our appetite feelings, and I was talking, for example, about about uh, television viewing. So we know that when we watch television, it stimulates food intake in the absence of hunger. And I was talking about a recent study, crossover study, where they compared a 30-minute meal with television versus without television. And there was an excess calorie intake of, how much? of 288 calories wow. with just 30 minutes of television viewing. Without noticing. No, so we don't realize that. It is, of course, a distractive activity. So the eater tends to ignore his appetite feelings and we just eat more when we watch television. So watching television is not only about uh, sedentary lifestyle. No, yeah. So we know that we don't burn a lot of calories while doing that. So it is worse than just being a sedentary activity. Yeah. We eat more. Kids are not only watching television. No, they also play a lot of video games. And I did a study in Denmark last year uh, where we compared one hour of seated video gaming versus one hour of just complete rest on a comfortable chair and we observe that again even video game playing increase food intake uh, by 80 calories more in a buffet style meal offered after the completion of both tasks. So I think that's the first study showing that. So again, it adds to the fact that a lot of stimuli in our daily living uh, increase food intake and we need to be aware of that. Otherwise than these two uh, sedentary lifestyle activity that make us uh, eating more, you discover that there are other factors that are uh, more uh, challenging or uh, less evident. Yeah, less covered factor like uh, mental working, so thinking what we do every day on the computers. So uh, we didn't study that that much because we know that we are less active today. We use less our muscles, more our brain because it's a knowledge-based economy. So we need that in order to grow. But there are some side effects. But working hard, like it, like yeah, working hard Intense with your thinking. head. And it's like a stress. It's a mental stress. So yeah. What was the study? So we did uh, in female uh, students at Laval University here. We compared 45 minutes of relaxing on a comfortable chair versus 45 minutes of mental work. So we gave the participants a text and they had to do a summary of 350 words using a computer. And we measured energy expenditure and measured food intake after both tasks. So same energy expenditure. So thinking hard, we don't burn more calories by doing that but the participants ate 226 calories more after just 45 minutes of uh, thinking. So altogether, we like to say that thinking is worse than doing nothing regarding uh, its impact on energy balance. Very surprising, what else? Music, listening. Really? Yeah. Wow, so, that's a very sedentary lifestyle, it's not stressful. <coughs> no, and we know that there are a lot of people listen music, which is good, we can relax while doing that, but we have iPods everywhere, waiting for the bus, and etc. And again, this is another distractive activity, and there's a recent study showing that when you eat while listening to music, what you kind eat of more. Music, like classical music, I think it's relaxing, so maybe it's like rock and uh, so uh, metal, heavy metal, or, for, well, that, for kids especially. <coughs> Yeah, for that study that was uh, 
that wasn't a, a, a specific type of music. Everybody was uh, free to choose their type of music, okay. and they were eating more, 107 calories more, more while uh, listening to music. Never. But we know that, like in restaurants, in nightclubs and bars, that's why we have music also because they know that we consume more and we drink more. So for the money aspect, do you believe it's still um, linked with distraction? Because we know that distraction make us eating more than uh, if you are quiet and concentrated on what we eat. Yeah, it's really about that because in all of those studies there were measures of uh, blood samples so we can try to link that with key appetite hormones but no, it's not because we feel more hungry, it's more the non-homeostatic feeding behavior and the reward aspect with comfort food so uh, it's destructive activities. Uh, and we just eat more because of that. So it's important to be aware of that and just adding those calories every day, it, it's a positive caloric balance in the long run and we can gain weight. Okay. And another subject that they have been studied extensively, it's about uh, sleeping or lack of sleeping in this case. Could you talk about it? Yeah. So lack of sleep has been shown to lead to weight, to weight gain and a lot of other health problems in the long run. For example, a recent study from uh, Laurent Brondel in France showed that after, where they compare uh, four hours in bed versus eight hours. So after four hours, the day after, uh, the participants ate 550 calories more. So sleeping less, increased food intake. But here, uh, there are some uh, changes in key appetite hormones with leptin, with ghrelin and cortisol. So short sleep is a stress factor for the body that increases hunger and food intake. But when we sleep less, we have more time and more opportunities for eating. So people are more prone to snack and to overeat. And also it impacts energy expenditure and physical activity because we generally feel more tired and less likely to exercise and do physical activity. So what was a surprising result 10 years ago? Uh, have been now a uh, challenge with uh, intervention studies and it's now it's like still a robust uh, effect of uh, lack of sleep and uh, increase of, in, of energy intake and certainly linked to obesity or weight gain. Yeah, and we need to go beyond just the fact that some activities are sedentary, they don't burn a lot of calories, so sleep is quite different compared to television viewing, video game playing and mental working because an increase in sleep is rather associated with better health and a better appetite control as opposed to those other uh, activities. So don't put that in the same basket and assess both sides of the energy balance equation. So uh, it's, it's finished. You have nothing else to, to study or what's next? <laughs> Yeah, a lot of things because <laughs> obesity, as you know, is quite complex. So even though we know what to do, how to do it. So I think it's about making the healthy choice a normal one for people. There are so many uh, forces and drivers and we need to uh, make our environment more uh, easy for people because it's so easy to just not exercise and eat too much nowadays. So key message, uh, mindless eating is watching us and watch your environment in all kind of activities. Yes, and even at the CSEP meeting, the muffins and those, uh, so they are very close, so it's easy to resist. Okay.